We thank you, God, that um, we just thank you tonight, Father God, that your presence is with us. God, we ask you tonight that you would just come. Actually, this afternoon, Lord, that you would just come and you would just be in this place. Father, we thank you that no matter where we are, there you are with us, Father. And so, God, tonight, we just thank you that you're just going to supersede, God, anything that we think or that we could even think to ask for tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I just thank you as we worship that you would be exalted in this place, that your name would be lifted high. And so, right now, God, we just give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Our phenomenal night. I'm really going to be really brief, but I want to tell, I want to piggyback off some of what I said this morning. All right, Can we do that. You give me a few minutes, and I really think this will help you out a lot. Wow, man, I feel good. I was, you know, I'm going to tell you something. How many y'all pray in the Holy Ghost? I was just praying over here in the Holy Ghost. You ever pray? Just shut your eyes and just get carried to a different place. I, I'm going to try to get this out, but I got. I, I mean, I, I kind of stood up. I was like. Man, I'm at church, you know, praise the Lord. I mean, it just felt, felt so powerful. And I, I really have been, I, I, I want you, remember I talked about last week, I want you to get in, everybody look this way, she's all right. Um, I want you to get, I really want you to get an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when, once you get an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and you discover who you are, man, I'm telling you, you, you know, here's what's amazing. Doug, you know what's amazing is when you got all these tools and you figure out how to use them, it is amazing. It is an amazing thing. And I, I'm telling you, I've been doing this 20 years now. My 20th year of ministry is coming up in about a month. And I'm amazed at what God has given me in these days. I, I, I'm telling you, I've seen it last week. I see it this week. This place is about to explode. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Terry sitting in my fire line while like I got wild in that song. <laughs> you know, she, she's like, I, I like being up here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I want to talk to you about some clear instructions. You remember I talked about receiving the Holy Ghost. Jesus set the example, and he resurrected again. So I want to kind of go to the resurrection, and then from there to where he ascended into heaven, and then probably 20 minutes will be done. So if you were about to leave somewhere, I was about to leave, embark on a great journey, and I wasn't going to see you again. Wouldn't you think my final words or instructions to you would be pretty important? How many of y'all have ever had heard a preacher or anybody teach about how important Jesus' final words were. I have. We go here tonight. So, so Jesus was about ready to ascend into heaven, and he was about ready to give his last words, right? I'm echoing a little bit up here. Is that a, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, yeah, reverb. Take it. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be singing, so I'll be good. <laughs> That's be, I think it's better. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. I won't sing tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> So think about it. If our work on here on earth was done, we're about to turn over this entire kingdom. He was about to turn over the entire kingdom to this small group of men, right? So would you think your last words would be very important? Yeah, I sure would. So Jesus was talking to him, and he commanded his disciples. He said, hey, don't do anything until they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and I want you to understand something. That people are trying to minister and teach the reason a lot of y'all have bad information is because people are trying to minister and teach without being empowered with the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. Jesus, how many of y'all believe in Jesus? So do you believe what he says? His final instructions were, don't do nothing till you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know what he said? Because you're, you know why? Do you know why? You know why? Because he knew they failed. And he knew if they failed, that they would give up. Right? You remember what happened as soon as he uh, uh, got crucified? They said, hey, we go fishing. Right? They all went, you know what they did? They all went back to who they used to be. Let's go be an attorney. Let's go fish. Let's go do that. So he knew without the empowerment of the Holy Ghost that they were going to drift away. So he said, hey, I'm here. I've been here. But I want you to, I, I, you're going to have to wait. So let's just read it. I don't want to get ahead again. I'm trying to get ahead again. <clears throat> so let's look at the Bible. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, okay? Let's pull that up. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. So Jesus commanded his disciples, he said, don't do anything until you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So let's look at it. All right. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he have heard of me. Right? You, you got that? Is that five verses? What is the verse? We've got these things here now. Is that five? Go back to five. Okay, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be what? 
baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from here. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? So he was telling that he was going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days since. Now look at verse 8 and 9. Can you flip it to 8 and 9 for me? But he said, but, and here's what he said. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So when do you get power? Say it. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he said, but you, you talking to the disciples, the ones that were left behind, these were the last words, right, that Jesus spoke to them. But he said, nobody, has anybody ever told you this? I mean, you read it, but nobody's ever preached this. This was a commandment of God, of Jesus, the last word, so you would think it would be important, right? But he said, come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth, right? So all over the world. You believe that, right? And go to, go to the next verse. And when he has spoken, what things? The things I just read to you, right? His last words. Did y'all know what his last words were? Did anybody know? His last words were tarry for a little while, so till you endure with power. And when he had spoken those things I just read to you, while they beheld, he was taken up in the cloud and received out of their sight. So how important is it now, children? The last thing Jesus ever spoke on earth was, on earth was receive the Holy Ghost. And, and you won't do anything. Think about how difficult this was for the disciples. Think about how difficult it is for some of you legalistic people or people that are traditional like I was. I couldn't get it. My wife comes home. She's all filled with the Holy Ghost. She's acting silly and crazy, praying in tongues. And they're talking this crazy stuff about them women preachers and all this kind of stuff. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't. I was like, ah, oh, I can't get it. I didn't understand it, right? But it was, it was difficult for the disciples too. Jesus had preached God's word. He had demonstrated his power on earth like nobody else before. And, and what had happened is, you know, the religious leaders of the time had him killed and buried, right? Okay? So here the disciples were, hey, you want us to hang around Jerusalem? That sounds really good, doesn't it, doesn't, doesn't it James? Hey, let's hang around and get crucified like Jesus did. Hey, let's hang around. But they seen that, that, that what it took place, they seen... That what Jesus demonstrated, the power he demonstrated, and, and the things that happened in their natural minds, you know, to their natural minds, it appeared at first that Jesus was really just a natural man. Even though, listen to me, even though they'd seen the miracles and everything else, he was, he was crucified. He, but, but he, but, and he was buried, but what happened after that, right? But, but three days later, that's why when Jesus died, they all went fishing, right? Because they say, oh, well, you know, he may have did that, but he must be just be somebody, just to say another man. But what happened is, three days later, what happened? Three days later, what happened? Oh, you know, uh, somebody brings a doctor, you know, you, somebody comes in sick, people get healed, people get delivered. How many of you got delivered? In, I mean, I mean, miraculously de delivered in one night. I did. Amen. Amen. I mean, got all at one time. I, I mean, got boom. I mean, that, that's the way it was. But what happened is, Three days later, he arose from the dead exactly as he prophesied. And what he did is he validated everything that he'd been telling them. And what I'm trying to tell you today is Jesus don't do nothing halfway. Jesus don't make no mistakes. And what Jesus said and did, he expects us to do. Hey, yeah, I want you to believe in me and get, go to heaven. But he also wants his men and women and his children to do with power. Amen. And he wants us, me, you, Miss Sandra, to carry out his his will on this earth and go out and do things greater than he did. He wants us to heal the sick, cast out devils, amen. Bring the harvest in. That was our job, right? So, here's what happened. They thought, three days later, he, he, he rose from the dead exactly as he prophesied. And I'm telling you right now, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you just get out of yourself, out of you, I mean, don't even think about nothing else, and you start looking up, and you start praying, and you start praying and thanking God for receiving and believing, You'll get it. You'll start, it'll start coming out of you. Amen. It'll come out. You'll be in due with power. Right, James? You didn't know what the Holy Ghost was. You know who the Holy Ghost was. You didn't know if there'd be a Holy Ghost. Right? But what happened? You got it. Now, you, now James, you like me, James. I ain't know what. I know what. Shed that robo. Put it in there. Shed it. Now I see you come over. What well, other night? You know, you come up here. The devil trying to put a heart deal on you. I said, what What I tell you? You're healed. But what do you do? You kept bringing back symptoms, didn't you? But guess what? It's validated. What was what we said in here not validated when you went to the doctor? They couldn't find none, right? They said you had a bad burrito. Exactly, right? Amen. 
It couldn't be about. So what I'm telling you right now is that what I'm telling you this morning and tonight will be validated. Amen. Uh, well, it don't seem like it's working, Bishop. You know, y'all been here 10 years. We're not exploding the walls up. You better get ready. You better get ready. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because I've been praying. I've been believing. I've been saying, God, you said you add to the church. Say, I don't care about number. I care about a harvest. I care about signs, wonders, and miracles, people being healed, people being delivered. Amen. People, you know, and we have a church now. We're being validated. We're being validated. For years, we, we tried to play church, be the regular church. Now we got people, we got people that maybe don't have a whole lot. We got people that got a whole lot. We got people that got a little bit. We got people that ain't got no bit. We got everybody. We, we represent what heaven should be like. Amen. We're being validated. You see what I'm saying? See, a lot of times, we get impatient. We want to be validated now. We get impatient. I get impatient. Y'all know me. But God said, wait. He told the disciples, chill, boys. Chill here. Yeah. You mean here? No, i got to go fish. No, but he said, chill here. Stay here. So, and he, Jesus spent 40 more days on the earth teaching his followers even before he went back to heaven, right? Is that true? And why did he tell the disciples? Why did he tell them to stay in Jerusalem? Why? It's ready. Why did he tell them? Because he wanted them to receive the Holy Ghost, right? Amen? He said, if I go away, I'll send back one, a comforter, that greater you'll even do than I was here. So he, he knew this. He said, it's an amazing. How many of you know it's amazing to be born again? Amen. It is. It's amazing to be born again and forgiven of our sins. Is it not? Amen. It's amazing. I ain't got to go ahead. I, I don't. No matter what happens, I'm going to be in heaven. You'll find me on Glory Street somewhere. Hallelujah Lane. It's amazing, isn't it? But how many of you know that we got to walk this walk and we'll talk this talk on this earth? How many of you know we ain't in heaven right now? <laughs> Maybe you are. We're not there yet, right? So we got to walk on this earth. However, here's the thing. You will never be an effective witness until you have the fullness of God through the Holy Ghost, right? You will never be the full creation of Christ on this earth, you will never be the one that God created you to be until you're empowered with the Holy Spirit. And when He comes, and when you invite Him in, and when you believe, then, everybody say then. Amen. Then I'll, you'll be able to live in victory and testify of His power, just like I did today. I told you. I would be a... I would, let, me, let me go. I, I'll make something simpler. You know, Africa, that was... You know what I'm saying? Well, we went and bought this land. We had no money. There is no way in this earth, 20 years ago, I would have took a chance of going trying to buy something and not have no money to put down. It don't make no sense, right? Does it? But I knew who I was in Christ, and God said, go for it. And I had, some, I had he, the Holy Ghost living inside of me. Go for it. Do this, they'll do that. Go for it. You do this, then I'll empower you. The money will come, you see? You do this. You be in do with earth. You walk in the earth. You go somewhere and pray with somebody. You go to a hospital and you're like, God, I'm not sure about this. I'm afraid. They're going to tear me up. No, God, no. why do you think the word, the word says that the Holy Spirit will prompt you and give you every word you need to say? He'll give you everything that you need to do. He will guide you in every step of your life if you'll just trust Him and believe in Him. But if you don't have Him and you don't know who He is, how can you, how can you lean on Him? Does that make sense? So when He comes... You're going to be able to live in victory and testify in power. The Holy Ghost enables us, me and you, to be more... It, really, here's what it does. It, it gives us a chance to more fully experience our salvation. Do you know what? I'm going to ask you something. I want you to think about this. And I thought about this today while I was putting this together. Oh, let's see how that... Did you really... How many feel the Holy Ghost in here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me ask you a question. I want you to just be honest. You don't raise your hand, just you can just yell out. Did you really enjoy yourself? I, did you really enjoy it till you're empowered? You were nonchalant. That's just to be honest. Nobody's gonna say no, I didn't, but you didn't. I didn't know what it was. I just, it's, like I told you, I guess I'm going to heaven, you know what I mean? I, I, but I didn't enjoy it. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Till we were empowered, we didn't really enjoy it. Because we just, y'all are going to laugh today when I say, you show up for church so you make somebody happy. You show up, I showed up to get a, you know, to date my girlfriend. Hallelujah. <laughs> I did. 
I was born again. I didn't, know, I didn't enjoy my salvation. I enjoyed her. She, did, uh, she said, I ain't coming to church that I'm sick. But praise the Lord, I ain't coming either. I didn't enjoy it. You didn't enjoy it. You know what it was. So you got here. Wow, I got more. I, there's more here than this. There's prayer. There's empowerment. There's all this other stuff I never experienced. Now I enjoy my relationship. I love coming to church. I love coming to worship. Amen. I love praying with my wife. I love praying with my family. I love laying hands on the sick and casting out devils. I love it. But I didn't enjoy the benefits of salvation. I really didn't. And here's what's so sad. So many people today, my family members, your family members, don't enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God of being a child of the king. They don't enjoy the, the, the joy. You've seen it work right here, Lee. Pastor Lee, we had a need. We said, hey, God, God knew the need. And before we could even blink, God met the need. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There was a need. Holy Ghost, like, you're in power. Hey. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? But years ago, I would win in painting. We'd have to have a fundraiser, sell some donuts, have a cookout, yard sale. No, God, God ain't going to let us come in here and not have no sale. I ain't going to let us show up in here and not be prepared to carry his God. I remember we were in Africa. They say, oh, this sounds messed up. I was like, God will provide. They say, you know, they bring some of the little rickety-dickety old speaker out there. And they say, here you go, Bishop. Pray. Here, sing. Do something with it. Hallelujah. God always provides. Bishop, they're going to tear the stage down. I don't know what we're going to do. I said, my God is able. He will provide. I, I said, go tell the government people we're going to build it back. Boom. Back it went. You see what I'm saying? So... When you're empowered, you start enjoying the benefits of that, right? You start seeing the benefits. You start realizing how wonderful it is to be a child of the king. And, and how that he works every... I had, let me tell you, I had a tooth filled a couple of days ago. A couple of weeks, three weeks ago. Was it three weeks ago? Four weeks ago? I don't know what it was. I ain't had a cavity in 31 years. And, and I had one this time, <laughs> praise the Lord. I go get that thing filled. My tooth hurt worse when I got it filled than it does now. And Doug has said something. I, I remember you called me. I think you told me when they said, lay hands on this tooth or pray something about this tooth, didn't you? Remember when you had a tooth problem or something a few weeks ago? He was telling me the other night. He said, man, it went away. God took that thing away from me. I thought, I'm walking around with a stupid tooth hurting, and I had commanded the pain to go away and stop. You know what I did last night? In the name, I, I said, I'm telling you, I ain't kidding y'all. I was studying for this lesson. In the name of Jesus, you got to stop. In the name of Jesus, it's got to go because this thing hurts every time I drink coffee, every time I drink something. It's sensitive, right? Praise God, he went away. Amen. That's a benefit, is it not? I mean, I didn't know I had that benefit back 20 years ago. Now, sometimes we forget because we thank God that it's something small as a tooth. Praise God. You got, if you ever had a toothache, I'm going to tell you right now. Hallelujah. You want some, you want some relief. <laughs> you know, it's gone. Hallelujah. And them dentists, man, they charge a lot, right? So I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's cheaper. <laughs> so, but, but listen to me. I want you to understand this. I'm going to get done. The Holy Spirit enables us all to fully experience our salvation. Then we can effectively share with others the awesome things that God has done for you. And that may not have been awesome to y'all, but that's awesome to me. So, here's one of the things. Many, many, peop many, many people in church, many people are Christian people. Many of them, how many of y'all love God? You love Christ, okay. That's good. But here's the problem. Most people say they love God and love Jesus, but they try to serve Him in their own power. Okay? Because they haven't been baptized in the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6 says this. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter of the law killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. When believers try to here's, here what it is. When believers try to minister out of their own carnal or witness out of their own carnal knowledge and ability, even when they say and do the right things, guess what? Remember I told you about Dr. Teal. It don't carry no spiritual weight. You understand? It just ain't got no fire. Have you ever went to a church? And, and listen, I'm not telling you I mean anything. And you, you had a preacher get up and you're like, are you serious? Oh, there was no power to it. Have you ever been to church where the pastor didn't have no power? You know what? He probably had, he read the, probably the King James Version. Probably read the Bible, right? But there was no power coming from it, right? You, man, I want when I preach you to feel it. Because I got something to share with you, right? I want you to experience the power of God, right? But have you, ever, have, you ever, have you ever seen it where there was nothing to it? It was probably a good message. 
They probably told you about a story about chickens and stuff like that. And, and told you about all this stuff. And they had good analogies. And they had great videos. And I'm not knocking that. But they were doing it on their own. Thank God. God give me the word. Then I got the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. They can poof. Bore it out to you. Where it's not so boring. Right? Or have you ever heard people singing? And they're up there. And, and there's no worship. You know, they're up there. They're up there. It's a show. Right? It's, it's, it doesn't empower God. But what I'm telling you is when you got the Holy Spirit and you do it in the Holy Spirit, it carries spiritual weight. If so much, I mean, I know the church, a lot of the church, so much of the deadness of the church today stems, it comes from this. Believers attempting to minister without the Holy Ghost empowerment. Did you know that? That's why people leave church. That's why people don't stay. That's why people leave because. They can't comprehend it without it. We will start seeing the manifestation of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit in the church when we start acknowledging that He is real in our lives. Okay? Every single one of us. Pray in the Holy Spirit. People may, Christine, you, you go pray. People may not understand you all the time. Praise God, but you know who you are in Christ. And there's a flow out of you. And there's a flow. And there's and, and Sabrina and Pastor Stacy, when they sing and they worship, there's a flow. There's an anointing that comes out of them. It's real. And you know what? You can feel it. We not, may not be the, have the best voice. We not, may not pronounce the words the correct way. We may not know everything. But we get, I guarantee you this. i got somebody inside of me that has empowered me to carry his gospel. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that the devils in hell have got to bow down when we walk by. Amen. And I believe when we walk by somebody, you, me, anybody that's been empowered of the Holy Spirit, that, that people can be healed and people will be healed. I believe we can take a handkerchief, wipe our forehead with it, throw it to somebody, and God empower them and save them, and they'll never be the same. I believe that. If we did this on our own and we threw a handkerchief to an unbeliever like Pastor Lee, who is, he was an unbeliever, and he catches it, and his life is never the same. No matter what people have told him, tried to shake him, push him, he goes, you know what? You can say whatever you want, but I know what happened to me. Amen. It's real. You can't do it in your carnal mind. Number one, you would never wipe no sweat on your head and throw it at nobody. <laughs> Amen? But it's the Holy Ghost empowerment. And we'll start seeing more manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our churches, in our life, in our families when you start acknowledging it. When you start welcoming in. When you, when you say, when you, you start saying, you know what? God healed me. Amen. God, it ain't that nothing was not there. God touched my heart. Amen. And you start recognizing, you start acknowledging, and the more you acknowledge it, the more power will flow out of you. What a testimony you got already, right? He is real. Do you believe he's real? Amen. How many know that we need him in our life? How many know we need him in our church? How many know you need him in our country? You know, so tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Jesus' last words to his apostles were, hey, Terry, chill, chill out. Stay in Jerusalem. It's dangerous here, I know. Some of you may be in our ministry today, so you know what I feel like I'm not doing a whole lot. Terry, stay here a little while. Come on, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Get in power. Get in line with what we're doing here. And watch God move in your life in a mighty way. And you've got to trust him. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be honest with you. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't gonna be, what do you always say, uh, Jerry? It's, it's simple, but not easy. I was spitting there. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. It is, right? This is not easy. It's, it, it's simple. It's not easy. People are going to mess with you. People are going to push you. I'm still filled with the Holy Ghost. It don't matter what they say. Amen. And I'm going to get you empowered. If I can get everybody else empowered, how much more of an impact can we have in the earth? How much more can we come in here and when visitors show up, man, just explode. You brought your, you know, your fiance today, right? Try, amen. And he goes to, you know, hello, hello. Somebody got a phone? Huh? I was a Pastor Stacy. Oh, yeah. I was going to answer it for him. Disregard that, Holy Spirit. Let me be calling her. I lost my train of thought. Huh? Oh, yeah, your fiance. He shows up there. He comes from a regular church, right, for the most part. And I'm sure he was like, what? What? But you know what? You know, she came in. She was, give me that. She was, I want to buy that book about the spirit praying in tongues. I said, good. He wants to read it because I want to talk to him before he left. But he liked it. Why did he like it? Because he felt something. There was something different. 
There was power anointing. Holy God. Wow, people, man, he's rubbing people's eyes. Whoa, whoa, what is that? See, the Holy Spirit. Amen. He doesn't, he doesn't need a big introduction. He's real. And he exudes, when he exudes out of all of us, others will see the glory of God in us and want to be, be like us, right? So let's stand to our feet. Amen. Tonight. And let, let's be plain. The clear words tonight are, if you believe, if you believe, he laid hands. Remember when they come and they found those followers of Apollos? And they said, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they go, we don't, know it. we don't even know if there be a Holy Ghost. Oh, how many of you know there is a Holy Ghost? Amen. How many of you know that all you got to do is believe? Don't try to, and here's another thing. Don't try to figure it out. Well, how am I going to speak in tongues? How am I going to do this? Quit trying to figure it out. You will never figure it out. Just do like they did. They were up in the upper room like... What's going on? And next thing you know, the cloven tongues of fire fell on them, and they all received the Holy Spirit. So tonight, if you need a prayer, you're lost without Christ, you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity, you're not empowered, you don't feel healed, you don't feel good, you don't feel like you're in a good place, this is your night. Come on, what we sing.